Hi, so this is a modified version of our Bloodcraft deck. Um, we believed that by bumping up Pure Hearted Singer, reducing Belphegor, and putting in second Zelgenia with three Urius and three Isla, this seems to be a better package. And we have a funny replay that has, uh, shows off a little bit of that capability. So this, our opponent was in 12,000 Grandmaster, and they're playing one of the decks that make people really salty. It's called OT, OTK Takeoff. It's a one-turn kill deck. It, it's Phoenix Roof stack. We played quite a bit of it ourselves, and so it was pretty funny because this deck, for, first of all, their, their game plan is to throw a Phoenix Roof down, then do um, something called From the Deep, and then play Dagon. Dagon. And Dagon can do 30 damage in a single turn. But our game plan can. Our game plan, using the Depraved, can turn our any damage, reduce it to only 3 damage. It's damage mitigation. So we reduce our HP, but you can only take 3 damage at the opening attack instance. So, so far our hands looking good. We know we're up against, the moment we saw Fluffy Dragon, we were like, oh, he's playing to into Phoenix Roots. So, it's nice that we evil first, so we got Vezel. Evil. And now we have Archangels of Evocation. So easy. So by having a Phoenix, uh, respond to Phoenix coming down. Features. Now any cards we draw will just come in half. Encounter from the deep. You got Dagon. Usually it's game over the next turn. For most people, the game is just immediately over. It's turn five. It was turn five since so turn five. And if you cannot protect yourself in a major way, you just lose. So he's got, when I say protect yourself in a major way, you're going to need to remove this. You're going to need to put a guard. And you're going to need to be able to sustain 30 damage. Which this does beautifully. By evolving, we now bump our HP to 15. We take out the Phoenix, and we put a ward on there. So he thinks himself, well, let me, he's like, you think you're smart? He does, he does the counter for the deep. So now he has two. He has two very big Dagons. So he has two Storm Dagons that can do 30 damage. So he can do 60 damage with in five mana each. So he decided to, to wait one more turn to discount. The, re the reason why he dis chose to discount here is because it takes five. It takes five attacks to take me out. This, this, it takes five attacks to bring me to zero HP. And so, um, since it takes five attacks, and I, I definitely misplayed here, but, uh, so I first do evocation. Evo, evo. Uh, say. So now we, we have a, we have it even, um, now it's going to take him seven attacks to kill us. And he also needs to get rid of the Archangel. But now his, uh, Dagon's only cost three million each. Because he discounted him, everything's discounted. So this, well, so this Dagon is five mana without Storm. So he has two Dagons, he has two Dagons in his deck, in his hand, excuse me, that do not, he has two Dagons that have Storm that are, um, three mana each. And this is Dagon's uh, five mana, no storm. So we know he has seen all three of the Dagons. We attack. No. 
And so he only has one Phoenix. So the, mo the fact he played Goblin Mage and nothing was drawn means that he only had one Phoenix, uh, Responded Phoenix. We played that combo as well. So we're looking at this. I think we misplayed here because we are definitely... Let's see what we should do. We should use Revelation. But maybe we should use Belfi. Let's see. Ayla. Okay, that's a good one. Dagon, Dagon himself has a good shield, so he's going to Playing out the Io is interesting. I don't know if it's correct. Right. They put on his first Dagon, three mana. His Storm, real face. One, two. So he chose to push. So you chose to push nine damage and remove both. And I think the, the mentality there was he's thinking, I don't think he could even kill one Dagon. So he can't even kill one Dagon. What if I put a second one? So. So this is funny because. This is a 4 mana spell, it's 1. Everything's discounted twice. So that's why everything's so cheap. Look at Isla in the universe. I'm thinking, okay. I need to heal. So we put Sanguine Core out. Actually, I'll. That's ballsy. Yeah, oh, that's ballsy. Dude. So much. It's ballsy because I chose to. I think this was a good play. I chose to play. Sang keep Sanguine Core, save it, and not heal up. Because I felt that he only has two cards in hand. And we know what one of those cards are. He has the Dagon with Storm. But I, I definitely yeah, misplayed it. I'm really definitely going to misplay it. Question is, will he play his game on? So that's his last vote. Oh, so when we look at this, I, sh I missed. Okay, so I. So I technically messed up, and I healed past Zelgania drawing cards. So I should have, this is, when I'm looking back, I should have one, two, Isla, Snipe, Zelgania, Sanguine Core, Urius. It should have been done in that order. So I should have ran these in, Isla, finish it, heals me to seven. I throw down uh, Urius for one. So this is, oh, that's too much mana. Well, that's okay. I mean, so I should run the two in. Isla. Valve snipe that. Zelgenia. Oh. Then a Urius Evo for free. Then he kill Zelgenia heal. And then uh, use Garnet Waltz in the between. So I use Garnet Waltz for this. And then Urius. Free Evo. So this is. Oh, this is where I should put... Okay. Oh, so I understand. So I play a core down and get the Evo and a heal past. So Zelgeni gives me no draw. Well, this healed me into vulnerability. It also is part of I didn't get the free kill. Yes. See, I lost the kill. So that, that is a, that's a display here. And then he has Zelgeni out with... It was really funny. That was a surprise. He's encountered the beast. He didn't have anything else in his deck. So this is like his last. Oh, this, this this little thing he has. Now I can myself give you the combo. So we have that. And then we can use Sam Core. So now we're going to take 4 damage at the end of this turn. 
So here we miss out. And so we we were in a more desperate situation because if we saw Kenya not snapping and because we saw Kenya not snapping and not drawing any more answers. And so we survived three days, got three pictures. His spicy is Algeria, which I mean I've never seen someone play Algeria. Maybe Phoenix Roost, so that's a pretty interesting inclusion. Uh, so thank you God for the win. So this is actually a pretty interesting um, one. I mean, we'll go to it lightning. We definitely misplayed. Which makes me feel good, because if you're misplaying, in the past, Shadow vs. Dex, we would lose without even misplaying, and that's a problem. Like, if you lose without even misplaying, that means there's nothing you can literally do to change the outcome. But, misplays are indicators of where you have opportunities for improvement, and so, this one's a misplay, I think, because I just didn't time him right. I just, and this is a good matchup, this is a, like, haven, good matchup for our so we should play uh, it's, This is a funny one where you want to play Belfi, but there's too many cards. So this is a, and the Haven Crack deck that we played against here is a Raw Radiance. So, it's playing raw, and it's playing zone so it has the ability to snipe you down for seven per turn, which makes the matchup pretty interesting. I should probably consider not even playing I should consider not even playing uh a early pizza. It really, it really hurts. So this is good because his, his deck doesn't. He's already played out. He's already played out his um, all his evos, and so we're. Game plan is going to work great so far. Yeah. Rev. See, this is going perfect. This is going clean. This is going clean. So Wilbert, so he doesn't rely. This guy does not rely on um, on Alana, which I like. But by not even relying on Alana, oh, I messed up here. I messed up here. I did not. I this is the one I messed up. I should have attacked because I wasn't sure if he actually runs Elgenia. I think that's the thing. We should have realized he was running Zilgenia. Okay, yeah. The moment this goes in, it just changed the pressure. And, and this is avoidable if you just make sure you don't have any creatures alive on turn 10. So that thing can only happen on turn 10. That's too much. If you see that, you see that that's too much. And plus, we were getting free Zilgenia, so we really should have traded it into him. this card do? Okay, she's freaking good. Stopping the revelation so we <laughs> And ultimately we did something that is questionable here. And that's the decision to basically activate our...
the decision to activate our own, our own, um, we, we didn't even do that. So we're both, on, I just, just lost HP, I didn't just lost a free, uh, heal, I'm just, I'm taking 7 damage. So that, that's the problem here. So they just, uh, the fact that it does 7 damage, it's just too much. And I, 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 I think that was avoidable if we did not activate his, our own. So if we could have stopped it by realizing he was probably going to run um, Zelgania. So if we need to pay a little bit more attention on their turn times to not play into Zelgania. And then we need to remember that we have Zelgania in our own deck. So we ourselves can control how that was going to happen. And we, it should have been that no Zelgania was activatable on his turn, and our Zelgania was going to basically activate for ours. So thank you guys for the wins, and I pray that you guys have a great time.